Armando has studying on biology and medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook and Armando on. Please like, and here you can also ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things, including your artworks. You can also change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. In this video, we're going to look, talk about liver disease, fatty liver disease. The liver is one of the most important organs in our body. It has a major role in metabolism. The liver itself is prone to a lot of damage because we take in many substances such as drugs, alcohol, and bad food into our body. And so through this, the liver can, uh, the, the healthy liver can lead to uh, bad liver, uh, liver disease. So for example, if we take in so much bad food, such as ethanol and, and various uh, fatty substances, fatty food and drugs, this can lead to a state known as simple steatosis, where we have fat accumulation in the liver and we have what's called perivenular fibrosis, which is essentially fibrosis, uh, small bits of fibrosis within the liver. And this is the f essentially the beginning of uh, what's known as fatty liver disease. And of course, if this continues on, if we keep taking in bad food, ethanol, drugs, this will lead to inflammation, essentially, uh, a, a, a dangerous state known as steatohepatitis. And this is where we have fat accumulation, we start seeing liver cell necrosis, inflammation, malary body formations, and fibrosis. This is fatty liver disease. And the end stage of this state, if nothing is done to, to stop this, if we don't stop taking in bad substances, this will lead to the final stage, the dead end, known as cirrhosis, where, we ha where, where the liver is completely damaged. We see fibrosis, we see liver cell death, and we see hyperplastic nodule formation. The liver is dramatically shrunk in this stage, and essentially it's irreversible and damaged. There's nothing that can be done. It is interesting to note that from a steatosis state, it is reversible to go back to a healthy liver, as well as from a steatohepatitis state. It is reversible, and you can go back to a healthy liver if you stop taking in bad substances, the toxic substances such as alcohol. However, once you get to cirrhosis, it is irreversible. And that is why it is important that preventative measures and treatment are taking place to prevent um, uh, the progression to cirrhosis. So how do we get to the state known as steatosis? Well, this is essentially when the rate of fatty acid input to the liver is g g greater than the rate of fatty acid outputs from the liver. The fatty acid input can be the uptake and the synthesis of lipids within the liver, the output being oxidation and secretion of lipids out of the liver. And so that is why, in a healthy liver, we have normal levels of fatty acids. The normal level of fatty acids within the liver is regulated by, or the hepatic lipid content is the balance between the processes um, of hepatic free fatty acid uptake, the lipogenesis within the liver, fatty acid oxidation in the liver, and fatty acid export within uh, very low density lipoproteins. So we have, um, it's a balance between uh, rate of fatty acid input essentially and rate of fatty acid output. So what do we see in steatosis? Well, let's just take a hepatocyte here. Now in this diagram, we will see some ways that the hepatocyte takes in excess amount of lipids or how the hepatocyte takes in lipids which will then lead to steatosis. The hepatocyte has what's an enzyme known as hepatic lipase, which essentially breaks down triacylglycerols into fatty acids. Within the plasma, within the bloodstream, we have lipoproteins circulating around. Lipoproteins is made up of triacylglycerols or triglycerides. We have to know that triglycerides and triacylglycerols are the same thing. Now an enzyme, hormone-sensitive lipase, essentially hydrolyzes triglycerides or diglycerides to form free fatty acids within the plasma. The free fatty acids are then uptaken or brought into the hepatocyte. So now the hepatocyte has many fatty acids. With many fatty acids, um, the hepatocyte can synthesize, again, triglycerides within the liver many triglycerides, or alternatively, it can be broken down through oxidation. 
So fatty acids can either form triglycerides or it can go through oxidation. In steatosis, however, fatty acids are usually um, synthesized to form triglycerides. So now we, there's actually more triglycerides within the liver. Another way to obtain fatty acids is from adipose tissue. Adipose tissue uh, um, transports these fatty acids in lipoproteins as well. And then the lipoproteins can then uh, break down into free fatty acids and then be, and then the free fatty acids will be uptaken by the hepatocyte. Another source of uh, free fatty acid is from diet, such as fat, excess fat, or even uh, glucose, as well as ethanol. And this all contributes to free uh, fatty acid development and synthesis. So now, with heaps of fatty acids, we have more synthesis of triglycerides, but less oxidation, which means that the triglycerides will accumulate within the liver and form lipid venules. And essentially, this is what we see in steatosis. We see fat accumulation in hepatocytes. We see the fatty acids forming triglycerides, forming lipid venules. And we see less oxidation. So why is there less oxidation? What regulates this? Well, let's have a look at one process. When we have excess energy, as in fatty acids or glucose, it goes through a sensing process within the liver. Uh, the peroxisome proliferator activated receptor alpha, or PPAR alpha, is a nuclear receptor protein and is a major regulator of lipid metabolism within the liver. So if this PPAR alpha sensing is effective, it will increase the fat oxidation when we have excess energy. And so with increased fat oxidation, it means that we can get rid of all this excess fat and we have a healthy liver. However, if this PPAR alpha sensing is defective, this will decrease fat oxidation. And so fatty acids or excess energy accumulates within the liver. And this will lead to steatosis or simple steatosis. The PPAR gamma actually stimulates uh, this decreased fat oxidation process, which will lead to steatosis. Hope that made sense.